Greetings and welcome to the first garage update video of 2022. So today I want to talk about a couple of things and in particular I want to talk about the plans that I have for fixing up the brakes on the RS. Now the brakes on the RS are fine, you know they work just fine, um, but they are in need a bit of a refresh, they're getting a bit old and weathered and so the time has come to replace some parts on them. So beyond just the normal discs and pads, I have been gathering up several bits, um, some of which I have right here, uh, so I've got bits such as um, these from Mintex and I've got some Brembo bits here and various other parts, but one thing that I want to place that you know really needs to be addressed is the dust shields on the rear specifically the ones in the front are okay but the ones on the rear um, it's maybe hard to see with the wheels on yeah you can kind of see it just in the back there zoom in a bit you can kind of see that they are sort of nice and crispy and rusty and that is the same on both sides Oddly enough, the fronts aren't like that at all, but both of the rears are just flaking off, like, really, really nasty looking. I mean, they are a few years old now, obviously. Um, they're the ones that came on the car, um, as are the rest of the brake consumables. Um, so that's what, almost five years in a few months, it'll be five years. Um, so, you know, it's you know not terrible to have to replace them after five years. I mean, they have been sort of, um, you know, on the downturn for a while now, um, but I'm just getting around to changing them now, whilst I am uh, thinking about changing all of the other brake consumables. And as you may have seen at the start, I have some new ones right here. This is just a little package of bits and bobs. But yeah, um, I'll just crack this open here. Obviously there's more than just the um, replacement dust shields that I've got here. A couple of other bits. Can't even remember what these bits are. Um, spring, brake, shoe holder. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just put those to the side. Okay, here we are then. So, two brand new dust shields, obviously one for either side. These are a shared part for a lot of cars, um, a lot of Ford models, uh, from the Focus RS to the Focus ST, and even to other th models like the Kuga and things like that. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe that is why they sort of don't last very long with regards to, you know, the finish flaking off and going all rusty and just you know spreading and just not looking very nice whereas the front dust shields are specifically made for the brembo setup on the rs so maybe they're made in a different place by different people so they're better i guess um but either way these are the official ford parts replacement dust shields now instead of just, you know, tearing the old ones off, sticking these on and, you know, calling it a day, um, I'm actually going to, you know, do a, a fairly extensive amount of preparation on these to kind of avoid the rusting situation happening again with these ones, at least not as quickly as it would otherwise happen like it did on the stock ones. Um, now, the issue, I mean, I can see, I mean, from factory, this isn't the best finish you know i can quite easily see you know in a few different places uh where you know um the elements could get to the underlying metal start a bit of rust and then have it spread around and then that would be that um the coating is very very thin um it's like a single stage or whatever i'm not quite sure exactly what type of coating it is um but yeah it's very thin and it's not really built um to withstand very much um abuse shall we say so essentially what i'm going to do um there's two main things that I'm going to do. The first thing that I'm going to get started today is I am going to clear coat these. So I'm not going to bother repainting them or anything because, like I said, it's not the best you know finish but it is reasonably decent as far as being factory fresh um, so I'm going to get a clear coat on top of that um, a couple of layers and then I'm going to of course let that cure uh, for the appropriate amount of time and then the second stage which I won't get to today because of obviously the cure time that it's going to take on the clear coat um, will be ceramic coating adding the maximum amount of protection to um, stop the 
elements getting to the underlying metal going forward. So to do this, what I'm going to be using is this, the 2K clear coat from Touch Up Paint Factory. This is really, really awesome stuff. I've used this a couple of times in the past. And as far as being a rattle can clear coat, it really does, I mean, you, you can see there Pro Jet Spray technology sprays like a paint gun. So like it has like this sort of fancy nozzle that you can like get different spray patterns from. And it's like a two part thing. So it's got the clear coat, but then it has like a separate activator within the can. And um, you probably can't really see the instructions there, but essentially what you have to do is like pop the bottom off here and then you twist that little thing at the bottom, um, which like releases the activator and sort of mixes it. And then after that, then you give it a really good shake and you're good to go. Um, it's just really, really good. It's the closest thing to like an actual automotive clear coat um, that you would, you know, see on, you know, any car that, you know, I've ever seen in a spray rattle can. Um, so that is pretty sweet. Uh, so yeah gonna get a couple of coats on there uh, let's get started so before we get the clear coat on I need to sort of prep the surfaces here and the first part is to remove these stickers um, now these are not easy nice peeling stickers uh, you kind of just have to you know gradually with your fingernail just pry them off and you know you can kind of see it's leaving a bit of a scum we've already started on this one and you can see like this bit is as good as you're likely to get and um, so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to continue like just scraping this stuff off as much as i can and then i will show you a little tip for getting this sticker residue off so what we want to do then, the trick to getting this residue off, very simply grab an old rag that you don't really care about, get a bit of oil on there, and then a bit of elbow grease, and the oil should lift that sticky stuff off. And then afterwards, this is just some pure IPA alcohol. We'll just buff around where I had got that oil, just to sort of lift the oil off. Hopefully you can see that we are now nice and residue free. So just gonna do that exact same thing on this one. Nice residue right here. There we go. Nice and residue free. All right, final bit of prep then before we can spray is to just clean down the surfaces and Touch Up Paint Factory provide these, the anti-static wax and grease remover, essentially a wipe, very convenient. We just open this up, give it a good wipe and that's it. Now I'm just gonna use a nice clean microfiber just to remove the sort of wetness that we have left on here. Okay, so that is our surface, nice and prepped, really nice and clean. We know there's no more grease. There's none of that oil left on there, so that is sweet. So I'm just gonna dry this one off and then we will be ready to start spraying. All right, with our can then, the way that this works with the separate activator, um, I mentioned it before, but uh, we have to twist this. And in this little plastic cap, they give us a metal ring. So we just pop that out and get rid of that cap. Uh, so then we slot this into the hole right here. Kind of like a key ring type of thing. So that gives us something that we can then uh, twist. Um, so if you see in the back here, it says what we have to do is pull the ring down 10 mil, so a centimeter basically, and then turn it 360 degrees to release the activator. So very simply, we pull it. do a full 360. Okay, and then once you've done that, you can push it back in. So yeah, now all I have to do is give this a really good shake for two minutes and then we're good to go. 
Okay, so that is the can ready to go. And I'm going to be doing this like one side at a time, um, just so that I get a nice coverage on both sides. And I'm starting off with this side. This is the sort of inner side, sort of towards the inside of the car that you won't see. So I'm gonna get this one done first, and then I will flip it over and do that side, which is the outer side. So yeah, gonna get a reasonable layer on here. We don't wanna to go too thin, because then it'll just be like a sort of dusting, um, but we don't wanna to go too thick, um, because then we'll risk getting runs. So we want the layer on until it's looking just wet, then stop move on to the other one and then leave it for probably a good 15 minutes in between layers and then repeat that for as many layers as we're gonna do. Then after that, it'll be waiting about maybe half an hour at least um, before I can flip it over uh, whenever this is touch dry and then repeat the exact same process on the other side. So hopefully you can see that it's looking wet now, but it's not, you know, dripping like I was saying. Um, you really don't want to overdo it. You just want to get it looking wet and then it'll come together like this. Um, so yeah, just have to leave that then for, like I was saying, about 15 minutes for this layer to become like touch dry. And then we will get another layer on and then repeat that process a couple more times. Okay, it has been about half an hour, maybe a little bit more than a half hour, um, so it should be touch dry. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hang these up just um, to get them out of the way and to give them like plenty of airflow around all surfaces, just as they do their final cure. There we are then, all nicely hung up out of the way with lots of airflow around them. So. Basically just have to leave them there. Um, touch up paint factories say that you can in theory like start polishing and rubbing them after like 24 hours um, but you can't coat them with anything for like a full 30 days, so basically a month. Um, so I'm pretty much just going to leave them up there for you know quite a long time I guess at this point. And um, so yeah. Looking really good, certainly looking a lot better than they did from factory and yeah it's going to be a good job once we get those on. With that then we are finished for today, all that I can really do, we just have to wait for the cure to happen, wait for it to harden and then we can continue and get the ceramic coating done, get them on the car and everything should be great. So I hope you enjoyed this little video, thank you so much for watching, please do like, share and subscribe for more content to come very very soon including the completion of this little mini project to do up the bricks. And yes, thank you once again. Goodbye.